Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I've finally got the LG CX mounted on the wall. And as you could see from the intro footage, it looks absolutely amazing. I want to preface this first impressions video by saying that despite the TV being the best looking TV I've ever owned, there are some things I wish I'd known before I purchased the TV. They're not things that would deter me from buying an OLED or an LG OLED specifically again. But I thought it'd be good to mention these things just in case they are deal breakers for people out there. You'll of course find it difficult to gauge how good the TV looks through YouTube, but I hope this video gives you somewhat of an idea. Now onto the caveats and things I'd wish they'd known. The first thing I want to mention is the lack of gigabit ethernet support. I've got a wired connection to the TV and the LED indicator on my switch is orange, which indicates a throughput of 100 megabits, which is extremely disappointing as I have a 350 megabit connection. I have looked online and some people have complained about this. It's not a major concern as I've had zero problems streaming 4k content if the video was recorded in 4k and the streaming service has the option content will default to 4k now on the other hand if you've got a 5 gigahertz wireless connection you can theoretically get faster speeds over Wi-Fi given how expensive the TV is the remote is very subpar I knew about this beforehand and it wasn't really a concern for me as I'll be getting a Logitech Harmony at some point to replace the standard remote so on the remote itself you have a dedicated button for Netflix and one for Amazon Prime but there's nothing for YouTube I would have liked a YouTube button as it's the app I use the most so next I want to show you the home dashboard this is where you can see all of the inputs and if you've got anything connected to them and you've also got access to any media servers since the TV is on the same network as my media server the content on the server is immediately visible so the default music photo and video folders are accessible from my TV as well as the regular input area you've got the ability to connect to any IoT so Internet of Things devices since I've got LifeX LED strips connected around the perimeter of the TV wall I've been able to connect the TV to the live strip and adjust certain settings for the lights so you can see I can do the brightness I can also adjust the hue or the saturation my Philips Hue Hub is also on the same network so I can connect the TV up to my Philips Hue lights. Not yet tested this part of the TV but I'll be sure to include it in my full review of the TV once I've gotten to know the TV a little better and I've used it for longer than a week. To experience the TV in its full glory you should turn off the energy saving feature as it affects the brightness of the TV. You may also find that the picture mode defaults to standard. If you want the colours to really pop set the picture mode to vivid which will blow out the colours quite a bit but I found it works for certain content. My go to picture mode however is filmmaker mode which removes any additional image processing and shows the content in its intended state. Apart from the minor gripes my first impressions are overwhelmingly positive. It is a million times better than my previous TV which to be fair was nearly 10 years old. I haven't had a chance to game on the TV yet but be sure to subscribe as I'll be showing some PS5 gameplay in my full review. As the title suggests this is just a first impressions video so I hope you can forgive me for not going into too much detail. If you enjoy the video a like would be massively appreciated. If there's anything you'd like to see in the full review please leave a comment and I'll be sure to include it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.